Hi there, welcome to the latest news and discussions within the Noah Presgrave case, continuing our focus with the recent events which have come about in regards to Caden Pressey's private interview with police being leaked out there to the general public. Who was responsible? Why did they do it? When did they truly do it? When did they get a hold of it? And what was the purpose, the motive, the aim behind it? Was it to try and hijack it? Was it to try and destroy any value within that key bit of evidence, witness account or anything like that? Is it done to harm the justice for Noah? Will it cause harm? These are the key discussions what we need to highlight today. And as well, looking at the backlash of certain individuals out there who may have spoken out, Brooke Bounds Carter being one of them, Caden Pressey's own response to the ongoing recent events, what he's had to say, and possibly even Alicia Lee, the mother to Caden Pressey. This is what we're going to be looking at today, so don't go anywhere. We're going to be heading on over to the Facebook page because that's where most of the conversations have come about. I was going to be doing this video first before the actual interview analysis summary, but people wanted to see that more so I did it in that order. That's why we're getting this now. This is like the after thoughts, the backlash from what's come about in recent time. How bad is it really? Is there a form of damage limitation or is it game over? What good does it really do? So welcome to those that are currently here in this live premiere. Feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, discussions in the live chat box on the right hand side of the screen. And by the end of this video, if you've changed your mind or you've got some thoughts, additional questions, leave them down below in the comment section under this video. You'll also find a pinned comment by me with some additional links if you do want to support this channel. Shout out to um, Hardy Boys. I don't know if that's a reference to Matt and Jeff Hardy, but regardless, good name. Shout out to them for their support on the channel just recently. And anyone else in between, if you have done so, much appreciated. If you just simply want to catch up on recent videos of mine, an earlier one that I did today, well, actually I did two earlier on today, a light-hearted one. If you need that, it's available. If you want a serious one in relation to this case and a portion of it from Caden Pressey's interview, which was eye-opening, you'll find it all top right corner of the screen. If you hover there right now, the eye symbol, click on that, drop down box to the full playlist of all the videos that I've done and the other ones that I've just mentioned in question, including last night's, which was just as important, very, very critical, which was the analysis summary of all the key details and timeline shifts. As said, in my opinion, not consistent with Partners in True Crimes interview. It does differ with certain times um, and maybe how it's been worded here and there, one being confident, the other one not being as confident or sure. One being open, the other one being a little bit manipulative in terms of who's interviewing, which would be the police guy. So it does differ in terms of the dating of when they occurred at. Supposedly, I saw a comment claiming it was in June when the private interview took place, June 2024. I believe Partners in True Crime did their interview with Caden Pressey in July. Not much difference, not that far apart when you compare the two. But the details do vary. What we need to take in mind, one interview wasn't meant to be revealed public. The other one was intended for public audience. So things may differ in details. But in terms of timestamps, are they purposely done differently? to throw people off the scent, I wonder. You know what, we can, we can talk about that in another video because there's probably some kind of uh, timeline adjustments that we might need to do, separate standalone map analysis. Um, I just wanna make a few comments before we go any further. Unfortunately, I was supposed to be responding back to someone's comment on YouTube, but I just couldn't find it now. So I'll respond back on the spot, but also make a point about last night's chat. So let me just um, address that first. In terms of last night, whilst granted I did an exceptionally long video, meaning there was more time for people to talk and hang out, I would say last night was probably one of the best and one of the most fun nights in terms of like on YouTube in a while. There's been other good times, but just the amount of people that showed up last night 
Um, you had some light-hearted, funny moments, which was nice to see and positive. You had some very deep discussions and questions and answers about the case. You had cat fights, the zoo coming loose, the dogs coming out, the wicked cackling witches, supposedly, which Miriam resummoned. <laughs> but it was just a mixture of everything. Now, I do understand it might not be for everyone. It might have been a bit chaotic, but you always have a choice. You have the power to fix that chaos. And no, we're not going into a, a poem or a narration just yet. But what I'm getting at is, if you don't like someone, you can block them and then you don't have to see them in the live chat. So if it ever gets too much, you feel like it's too hectic, or there's the odd troublemaker, just block them. Now, of course, I could do it myself, but then it means everybody doesn't get to see that person. And there might be some people in the chat that get on well with them. There's a, there are exceptions where it becomes very problematic to the channel and harmful, where maybe action is needed. But when it's people either defending themselves or stating a certain narrative, it's important to document and cover an archive because whilst not everyone may agree with it or find it annoying or damaging, you yourself get to witness all these key named individuals and those that may normally lurk in the background elsewhere. And when I say lurk, sometimes I mean it in a light-hearted way and I don't mean it bad. And then other times when I say lurk, like now I'm talking about maybe those within the case or connected to those within the case and they're just watching, listening on in, but they, they might leave some comments too and they might have a go at some viewers might not be the best situation, it might not be great, but at least you get to see it, you get to witness it, you get to see it from the horse's mouth. Because as time goes on, yeah, you've got pages here, there, and groups that become private for good reason, and become moderated for good reason. But you know what it's lacking? That openness. So when people say, oh, I wonder what happened to that person in the case, I wondered what happened to that family member or that friend of friend, they've gone so silent. Is because they've got less choices. So they might gather here. But take in mind, it's not all the time. So for anyone that's thinking, oh, it's a massive downfall, 98% of the time, the problematic people don't show up. That's a fact. I've seen it myself, and some of you would have witnessed it too when looking at the chat. Last night was chaotic was because of the theme, what it was about, and who it involved. Kind of inevitable. Tonight's video could be just the same. But it's not always going to be like this. It was okay in the Dylan Rounds case in the end, it'll be okay here. So it's all under control, right? Now, linking on to that when it comes to mods, moderation, like what you get elsewhere on other platforms, yes you have it on YouTube too. And the odd viewer uh, has inquired about becoming a mod on my channel and I appreciate that, it's good of them to reach out, that's, that's very positive. The the energy behind it and uh, the want to do it. That's all good. But I think I think the person on YouTube's called Katie, if I'm correct in saying, I was gonna directly respond back to the comment, but I just couldn't find it. So that's why I'm doing the response right now. At this moment in time, because I'm not a massive channel, I mean, if in the future it got to a point where there was like 500 plus people watching live, and the live chat was blowing up and everything, then maybe I might appoint moderators if needed, which can include you. I'll definitely take that in mind. But at this moment in time, it's somewhat controlled. It's not out of control because there's only so many people watching. Okay, 158 people watching live is still a great amount considering, in, in my opinion at least, and it's really good to see. Uh, last night was probably up to about 146 maybe, but still it's manageable. So that's that's one of the factors what I take in mind. The other reason why I don't have moderators at this moment in time and back in 2020 with the Dylan Rounds case, it was needed elsewhere with other channels except mine. And you know what? All the other channels struggled through conflict, drama, chaos, misunderstandings, Chinese whispers, everything imploded, downfalls, it all went to shit, except here, because I was the only channel 
In the Dylan Rounds case, that did not have moderators and it worked. So there's no point fixing something that isn't broken, right? So I just it's just best keeping it as it is. If it works, it works. Sometimes, and that's just in general, it's not that I don't trust people, but some people who become moderators can take it upon themselves to block this, block that, delete that comment and go a bit too trigger happy. That can lead to its own problems. I'm not saying that it would directly happen here, but in general, I've seen it happen elsewhere. And what else? Um, I think, yeah, the, the other thing is, for most part of it, the reason why I don't have moderators because I trust and I sense, I feel that majority of people that show up to my videos, my live premieres, are able to control themselves in an appropriate way. You can have your dodgy time, you can have your naughty time, you can have your uh, discussion time, focus time, random time, it is what it is. Sometimes if you start restricting freedom of speech, that can lead to its own problems. Sometimes when you appoint moderators and a form of control, that has its own problems. All these little adjustments can start creating a backlash and it doesn't take much, does it? So it's okay up to now. Last night was an example of how messy it can get, but I didn't see it in a bad way, right? I was still able to see the funny comments, the positive comments and all the stuff in between, the key discussions. And um, I know Vanessa apologised, but there's no need to apologise. It's okay, you do what you need to do. And that can apply to other people too. So that's it for now. Um, I think that pretty much summarises that. So we can just like move on with this video and just continue the momentum forwards because it's all good. So where do we begin first? Well, I said we're just really focusing in on Facebook. We're going to look for a handful of different posts and comments from key individuals like Caden Pressey, maybe Alicia Lee, and maybe Brooke Bounds Carter. Um, I don't know if anyone was aware, but JJ Bump Ass has made an appearance on my channel. They left a comment on one of my previous videos. Interesting. So maybe more and more people show up. Now, you know, to be honest, YouTube is a popular platform and you'd expect all these people to be on YouTube in some way or another. Yeah. But obviously most of these people who engage with social media and communication, well, you don't really do that through YouTube. You do it on Facebook. You do it on Instagram, Twitter, and maybe some of the sites which are meant for other things with intent. But to be honest, I think YouTube is the best because things can happen, good things can happen with people in a natural way without it being forced. And it's it just happens, it's natural. Just like with the videos, just like with the news and what else that comes with it. It's all natural and it falls perfectly in place no pressure, no rush, just fine. That's how it should be. So, with that all in mind, let's begin analysing the recent backlash. Here we are, so this is from Presgro's Army page. Just wanted to give a little heads up, as for the case discussion page, that is now successful, for those that know. So that means I will be able to do a bit more coverage from that side, that perspective, and see what else that can be picked up on. But the reason why we're looking at the army page is because this is where Caden Pressey commented and stuff, and that's where it's key, obviously. And there's some photos, text messages to do with Brooke Bounds Carter. So we're gonna try and get for it bit by bit or so. Two days ago by Vanessa saying, guys, right here, this today was leaked by our favorite Brooke Bounds Carter who did something very illegal and obtained Caden's private interview with law enforcement and now after JJ Bumpass has been caught in lies about not being there, she's the reason this was posted, which is illegal. What are you doing thinking this is going to silence us or hurt Alicia or her son in any way? Did you know there's several things here that show the stories from others who were awake didn't match? So... I mean, I said the interview that I heard and listened to, it didn't quite be as smooth or consistent as the Partners in True Crime one, though granted there was a lot more details given, which, you know, privately you would expect, publicly you'd be surprised to hear, and we got the chance to hear it. So there are pros and cons. The cons are some people's trust have been completely damaged, and 
how it could impl implicate the case negatively. The positives are the general public get to hear a bit more about the case. And whilst it wasn't intended or planned, you know, you got to take the positives from it. So we've learned a bit more, but maybe the tables have turned in a way where the timelines may need adjusting. Now, how do we know that Brooke Bounds Carter was responsible for leaking and doing illegal activity? That's what Vanessa says. We're going to get into it closer to see if there is proof and evidence. But first of all, we need to see the reactions by people first. So top comment wise, there's Cade and Pressy, but we need to do all the comments so none are missing. If you're familiar with YouTube, some comments don't always show. If you adjust the filter to the newest, they will. It's weird, but it happens. So let's just load them on up. We've got Sharoy. How dare she needs to be exposed for the witch she is. So I don't know what page this was on. Was it on Sofa Sleuth? Was it on the discussion page? Was it on the army page? I don't know. Brooke Bounds Carter. My goodness, my goodness, what a day of discovery. Some people really should have stepped back when they had the opportunity. Dragging innocent kids down will always come back to bite you in the ass. Is that a reference to bump ass or just ass in general? Now, when it came to Brooke Bounds Carter last night, I saw a comment where she said, you've got really nice eyebrows. And I thought she was aiming that towards me. But in the end, she said she was referring to Vanessa. So all I've got to say about that, Brooke Bounds Carter, I'm real jealous and I'm actually a little bit offended. You know, oh my God, Vanessa and her eyebrows, good for you, girl. But what about me? It's all about me. All right, home girl, calm yourself down. I want to know myself. What's my eyebrows like? Well, they're not moving, so they're no caterpillars about. But in all seriousness, is the reference to this as in Brooke Bounds Carter telling people off as in, you know, Whoever's releasing and leaking this stuff, how dare they do that? It's just not good. It's not right. What good does it do? And then are people responding back thinking, what right does Brooke Bounds have to say this when she's the one responsible? Hypocritical. Or another way of interpreting it is, is like a sly threat or dig as in, you know, you mess about, things come around to bite you back, like karma. But would it be more so false karma in this situation? Let's see the responses, how people interpreted it. Sharoy says, this post says it all. She's basically said, well, E, we know who that is. You were warned about stepping back, but no, you haven't. We'll just leak this information. Well, I hate to tell you, Brooke, but Caden's interview just solidifies everything we thought of. Caden has been consistent. Yes, he might forget times and dates at times, etc. My son does the same thing. Doesn't mean he's lying or details are inaccurate, though. He saw a video of a guy walking up to Noah and filming Noah by flipped side by side and Noah had a bloodied nose. Jack is a liar saying Noah wasn't injured. Well, that's a fair point there. We have heard references, though, in the past about side by side video footage, but not about Noah having damage to his nose. So a bit eye-opening that. But hopefully people saw my video last night because I just feel like maybe my analysis could have been a bit more critical, but I don't know. I just I just picked up on a lot more in, in which other people may not have done and they might have been just mainly all positive. I guess maybe because I've been realistic, but as well I've just remembered what has been said other times. Um, I mean, it's interesting to learn. But it's a lot to process as well. What else do we have? This is sickening, Julie. You see her last sentence. Well, I'd say it come back threefold. By leaking the recorded statement of Cadence, he's not only highlighted he's honest as the day comes and a true friend to Noah, but also shows discrepancies of the party goers. But most importantly, of that video photo of uniformed, uninformed people removing Noah's shorts actually exist and it shows corruption and covering up. I bet they wish they'd not leaked it now because it just lifted a huge can of worms. See, the thing is, before Caden mentioned that, or at least it came about publicly from Caden in the leaked, you know, interview, Michael Faze Cass, member of some of these pages, was actually talking about it in those public posts. 
not everybody believed in it then. And has it changed now, considering Caden's acknowledged it? Shirai says, absolutely, calm as a bitch. Backfired on her. Julie, absolutely. Has I kind of think they didn't realise what they've actually done. I try to always pull the positives out of a bad situation. Shirai, I understand. See, this is the thing. I'm just doing it vaguely, but whoever decided to leak the footage, what was the aim and purpose? Some people here are saying it actually backfired on the individual leaking it because it actually just reinforces and proves that Caden is innocent or he's more consistent than ever in the eyes of the general public. So the leaker that did it, did they actually bother watching the video to see whether it was worth leaking or not? What I'm getting at is, if the interview was a complete mess and it made Caden look bad, it made him look like a liar, then the leaker would think that's probably a good idea to put out their publics and more people get to see that dark, rough side, right? But considering the interview was done fairly well and Caden had his back up against the wall at times when it came to the demanding presence of the interviewer or interrogator, Caden held up pretty well and said what he had to say and was somewhat polite too. I mean, it, it didn't show him in a bad light, so the leaker, what was the other reason to leak it then? To release it? What good does it do for them? How did they gain or benefit from it? You could argue and say it's actually gained more favour and support for Caden Pressey, as in what he's had to put up with and deal with. So, hmm, what else do we have, Julie? I was just about to post this and say the same thing. How on earth has this been leaked? If the FBI don't get involved after this, then I'll be shocked. I don't live in the US, but I'd be sending them this links for sure. Interesting. Vanessa, I know Brooke is a piece of work. I think I'm watching another one, same content. It's called Criminals Hate Me. Yeah. Is there any way we can make an official complaint to the FBI? Yep, my good old Trav. I think Sherry is referring to Travis Davison behind that YouTube channel. It wouldn't be a surprise only because while they made an appearance previously on my channel, when some people were talking about the name Trav, that YouTube channel claiming to be someone else got very triggered and defensive. Says a lot. Vanessa, I'm sure we all need to report this video, get it removed, contact FBI, first prove they're corrupt. And you know, if there is trouble with that video, that is why I didn't upload the raw video onto my channel, just in case there was backlash. Julie, I'm trying to, but navigating outside US is difficult. Alicia's Dropbox, whatever that is. Caden made an interview with Ellie and it was loaded to Dropbox due to being two hours. Here is the proof that after JJ was exposed, this was sent as a warning. Right. So you can see that there, if we can zoom on in, Brooke forwarded a link, but to who and what point of view? Oopsie daisy, wrong person. What, who you sent it to? Sounds a bit reckless. Brooke forwarded a link, new recording. Doesn't actually say what that recording is, doesn't actually give the length of it, but this is supposedly the leaked audio from the interview between Caden. So, does this directly mean that Brooke is the one to have leaked it because you see it here mentioned? I mean, it says forwarded a link. Does that mean they are the original poster and leaker of it, or are they just one of many people that have shared it about? Let's just see if there's any more. Julie, well, let them play dirty. It's showing them up for what they truly are. And what's this FBI electronic tip? Right, yes, I saw that. However, the leak came from a Dropbox, apparently not LE. So Dropbox is, is it on Apple? Is it on Android Universal? Where you can add files and it transfers over to other devices and it can be accessed pretty quick. I remember using it once in the past with some Excel spreadsheets. Let's see what else we've got. Donna, we all have come to the conclusion that none of their stories or timelines match up. Hmm. Dusty, how in the hell did she get a copy of it? Who is she? Are we talking about Brooke Bounds Carter or another name? Oh, here we go. Alicia Lee makes an appearance. 
Vanessa says, someone sent it to her. Are you saying that another person sent the leaked audio to Brooke Bounds Carter, then Brooke Bounds Carter decided to share it about? If that's how it's worded, you could say BBC is part of the problem, but not the original root cause. It would have to be the original person that sent it to her, if we're talking about BBC. What else do we have? Dusty, I get, but who? Yes, who? Shannon, from what I saw, it was in the Alicia's drop box and was shared. Does that mean that Alicia Lee has a drop box and someone hacked into it? What is Alicia's drop box and who has access to it? Good question. No idea. That's just what it said when I first saw it. That link no longer works. The file was deleted from her drop box. Or is that done as a form of damage limitation? Dusty, I didn't realise there was a link provided. See, this is the thing. Now, when I did my video, I just reached out to a couple of key people saying, is it a good idea to be posting the raw video or not? I already had doubt. It didn't seem like a good thing to do. And because I've done many analysis in the past with interviews and footage, I just make the notes and I talk about it in the video and that's pretty much it. Kind of basic, but it works. So I thought I could do the same again. Now, in terms of maybe some other channels out there, opportunistic ones, that might be why they decided to upload the video. But did they take into consideration, did they reach out to anyone in the background saying, hey, can I post this leaked audio, yes or no? If no attempt was made, then you could say it's a little bit of an unpopular thing to do. Shannon, it was floating around. I'm sure that's how it ended up on YouTube. Wow. Shannon Bowman. New recording. So how is that, or who sent that? It doesn't actually say. Oh, there we go. This item was deleted. You might be able to find it in your deleted files if it's not there, try asking the person who shared it with you. So a form of damage limitation took place. Not true at all. In what way? Snow. So someone sent it to her in the police force through Dropbox. That's what this is. Only way to get it is if she knows someone on the inside needs to be reported and investigated. So this comes across as in Brooke Bounds Carter was able to get a hold of it because she knew or got a hold of someone within the police force to pass it on down. But can I just ask a quick question? In Partners in True Crime, Cade and Pressy said uh, when he met up with police, when he did like... Um, an interview with them, Caden made sure to record the whole thing on his phone. Is it possible that that file from his own phone is the one that was leaked? Or are we talking about the official police record, recorded one? You get what I'm saying? Now, Alicia Lee, the mother to Ken and Pressy, responds to Dusty. This was downloaded to a Dropbox file created by Caden's attorney months ago. This leak and Brooke's horrible comments just go to show that justice for Noah is not what they seek. So it seems like Alicia Lee is also very confident that Brooke Bounds Carter is responsible. Now, did I see Brooke Bounds Carter share it like firsthand? Not, not in my experience, but we've seen the photo above but does it mean that they're the first one to post it around and share it or have other people as well in the background done the same thing dusty butler it is for sure them trying to distract but it's not working caden has been honest and told the truth the whole time i mean although the leak is bad trust somewhat damaged people having alternative reasons for leaking it and trying to cause harm at least for me it's made me see the case in a different way, maybe in a deeper way too. So I'll have to catch up with that to maybe make adjustments to the map. Joyce, so you're insinuating that EP shared, oh, what, Alish, no, shared this info with BBC. Who is EP? Show me the proof that she did share it with them all. It may be linked to a Dropbox, doesn't insinuate it was sent from her. Can someone verify that she did? Because I see no proof yet again. BBC is just stating she has it, but hasn't shown who sent it to her. Yeah. And like what we saw earlier on, that someone sent it to Brookbounds Carter. 
Now, maybe it's bad for Brooke Bounds Carter to maybe inquire about it or get a hold of it if they wanted it, but really, it, it the root problem comes down to the one that dished it out in the first place, and it doesn't seem like Brooke Bounds Carter is the person to get a hold of it direct, it possibly being passed on to her. Hmm, anyway, I think she sent it to someone she trusted, and they betrayed her and shared it. Well, that, that's interesting. The plot thickens even more. Did you share it with anyone? Asking Galicia Lee. Where's the proof? She says on this thread she shared it with Noah's family. I'm not saying they did it. I'm just saying once it's shared, it's easy to save. Alicia Lee says, who sent it to you? That's the question I'd like an answer to. Ooh, backfiring now, isn't it? So... Interesting. Joyce, I'm not stupid, of course. She's going to share it with the family. I don't see them sharing anything. Are you saying Noah's family gave this out? A lot of questioning, isn't there? No, it was not floating around to end up in her hands or on YouTube. They illegally hacked Alicia, which is a cyber crime, federal case felony, or it was leaked by the corrupt Ellie, who they've claimed is feeding them information and who is involved in the cover-up and is police collusion, police misconduct, police mishandling of the case, which are all crimes. If this is the case and warrants the FBI to take over the case and the investigation, investigators to be investigated, there's a violation of civil rights that needs to be reported to the Department of Justice. I wonder what will happen. You go, girl, says Vanessa. So much questioning, one could only think you're part of their clan. Oh, what else? Who is Elizabeth Lynn? I didn't see their name. You're vile and a real piece of work. Couldn't care less about Noah. Have made that obvious here by your laugh reacting just like Stevie Howard and Brooke Bounce Carter are probably one of them. And at bare minimum, one of their flying monkeys and trained rats. Now, not once have I had the opportunity to do it, but, you know, we're talking about monkeys Maria talking about monkeys as well in the chat. It's time for me to try one, okay? There we go. Trained rats. Can't really make that sound. That'll do. When clearly nothing about Noah dying or him deserving justice and has being held accountable. It's funny. No, this is a joke or a place to be making a mockery of a child's death who was brutally murdered. And Shannon says to Vanessa, nope, just trying to figure out who shared it originally, like the rest. And Alicia Lee says to Shannon, you don't have an answer as to who sent it to you. And Shannon says, it was shared to me by Claire. I don't know who sent to her. So it's like a game of past a parcel. Shannon Bowman, this is the one shared with me. Right, and there's the link to, we're not going to click on it just in case anything dodgy happens. Claire what? It says BBD. Does it? Melanie, why the hell is Elizabeth laughing? Sick people. I don't, I, have I seen Elizabeth yet or have they been blocked? I'm not too sure. Need to be arrested. Jamie, I don't know, but it's really sick to say the least and she does it all the time. There's absolutely nothing funny about any of this. She needs to go back to sofa sleeps where she belongs with her disgusting behaviour and antics. The admin needs to give her the boot. She's clearly here for the wrong reasons and couldn't care less about Noah or getting him justice. Yeah, Alicia Lee is Caden's mother. And what else? Because Caden was the one recording, according to him, early on. That's a good point, Linda Turpin. I did highlight that as a possibility, but then Alicia Lee said about the well, the attorney or something getting a hold of it and putting it in a drop box. Was the attorney recording it or was it Caden recording it? Because Caden Pressy said in Partners in True Crime, during one of the interviews at least, he recorded it on his phone. So does that have any significance to this situation? That's what I'm interested about. Can I find Alicia Lee's comment one more time with what she had to say? This was downloaded to a Dropbox file created by Caden's attorney months ago. If it was created by Caden's attorney, is Dropbox a safe place to be doing that, I wonder? And does that mean it was hacked? Does anyone know? 
Shannon Scott, they want to talk about Discovery. Ha, I can't freaking wait. And here we go, most importantly, Caden Pressy says, I don't trust no one anymore. Which is obviously very disappointing to hear, but it also makes sense too, considering what he's been put through. And to be honest, other people as well within the community, even those just simply online if they've been deceived, lied to, stabbed in the back, bad things can happen, of course. But this is the thing. When it comes to online, as brutal and rough and dodgy and dangerous as it can be, sometimes it can be positive. And what many humans will not acknowledge is that as impractical as it is, when it comes to online forms of communication or some kind of activity, it requires a lot more trust, it requires a lot more focus and a lot more patience, which can be very demanding. But if somehow, in many different situations, scenarios and over the years, if people manage to find a way through and it works, then that's far greater than anything else out there. So, in this case, not so good. But let's just see what people have had to say in response. Now, the only problem is, if Caden Pressy doesn't trust no one anymore, yes, it could make him smart and make the right decisions, but hopefully he doesn't shut off. Now, he, he does what he needs to do, and people around will help as well, those obviously close family. But, you know... It seems to be a messed up situation because it's, it's not just what's happened in recent time that's a problem but it's also in the past too i mean if caden was already a marked target for now this private thing to now be leaked would feel like there's no safety anywhere even when you feel like you're in safe hands or you're in an environment where whatever you say will not be revealed public and then it is it could, could be abuse of trust could be lacking safety not knowing what's next and feeling maybe more vulnerable, possibly. As well, with Caden Pressy talking about how friends have turned on him or just gone quiet on him, it's like the wall's closing in, which isn't good either. What do people have to say? I don't blame you, this is beyond messed up. So sorry, Caden, if this is your genuine recorded interview, please contact FBI and let them know it is corruption. Caden, we know your heart, we have your back. You can definitely trust me. Who's that, Paul Poacher? Caden, I don't blame you at all. Sharoy, I can see why, Caden, you've been treated horribly from these people, including those you once trusted and all, because you've been brave and done the right thing by Noah. You're one of the truest friends to Noah, and he sees what you've done for him. So you're going through all this. Be safe. Hope your parents are calling the local FBI. Remember David Spirit facing Goliath. Oh. The issue with contact contacting... Authorities, as he recorded it and Alicia shared it and someone she shared it with leaked it. This didn't come from the police. Is that so? I think Alicia was questioning Shannon, though, in that other thread. And Alicia was saying the Dropbox created by the attorney of Cadens and it was downloaded from there. But who actually uploaded it to Dropbox, the actual attorney of Caden? But who actually recorded it, though? Was it Caden that recorded it and then the attorney decided to get a hold of it and then upload it to Dropbox for future reference? And then it went wrong? I'm just trying to make sense of it myself. But Shannon says that Caden recorded it and Alicia shared it with someone. She, um, and then it backfired. Let's see the responses. Oh no, damn, I honestly thought it had been leaked by the police. Sorry everyone, I was hoping this might be turning point to get the FBI involved. The copy I saw came from the Dropbox account, so someone she trusted must have leaked it. But couldn't someone have hacked into it, though? Andrea. It's still an internet crime. Whoever posted it and leaked it can get in trouble, even if they got it through her Dropbox. I don't know how it's a crime if she shared it. Mm. And I know they shared it with partners in true crime because they said they heard it. Is that true? Can't remember that personally. Any responses though to Shannon? Depends on how it was obtained, that's true. If it were me, I'd report it and let review it. So sorry about you going through all this. Vanessa, beautiful comment. And you should. They killed your best friend and you're going through hell just trying to help us. Amy Tuesday. For Amy, every day is a Tuesday. You have so many people praying for you. Amazing parents, bullies taking advantage of your good heart. Tracy, just keep being honest. 
Shirai says, if Alicia shared it with a close confidant, that is completely different than someone exposing it publicly as blackmail. Now, if it links back to Brooke Bounds Carter in some way, does it link back to that, that threat by Brooke Bounds Carter in the past when she said indirectly, if you keep pushing and pushing Stevie Howard, then they might bite back the mother bear. And in addition, you know, when it comes to Noah's family, there are some dark details about the family or Noah that you do not want to be released. You don't want it. You remember that? Does that link onto this? Not so much about Noah, but with another person. If you keep pushing and pushing, it will bite you back. Hmm, doesn't look too good. Alicia, it was illegally obtained, and that is a fact. Alicia Lee has spoken. Interesting. As well, Alicia says, you know this is a fact? No, ma'am. That is not true. I shared it in confidence with Noah's family. I'm guessing you're allowed to do that. I mean, Noah's family haven't mentioned it public, so they've kept it private too. And what, in between, someone got a hold of it or someone hacked into it? Because if you share it in confidence with good people and those you trust and it still gets leaked, either there is a rat within the pile or some other person, outsider, hacked in. Unless there's another way around it. Vanessa says, we have a hunch who leaked it to them, but best to not say it. So what does that mean by Vanessa when I'm sure earlier on, on this post it was aimed that Brooke Bounds Carter was the one to leak it, but now we're saying we've got a hunch who's responsible, but it's best not to say the name. But I thought we've already mentioned the name up top, unless there's another person on top. Andrea, so this is happening to y'all. Problem with telling the truth, you did the right thing, pulling Caden away from that crowd of people. Right. Alicia Lee says to Shannon, are you trying to say that Rob and Cindy from Partners in True Crime leaked it? No, ma'am. They listened to something over a Zoom and leaked it. No, that did not happen. Interesting. Shannon, I didn't say that. I said you may have shared it with someone you trusted and they stabbed you in the back. But what would partners in true crime gain from doing that if they were responsible? Oh, here we go. Cindy Dorfman. If you don't know who Cindy is, she is, you know, the, the, the female, the woman who's with Rob from Partners in True Crime. I believe they're together. So they both like run that channel. Partners in True Crime, Cindy what do you call it, one of the host channel owners has spoken now, saying to Alicia, thank you, Rob and I would never post or give anyone material like this. Whoever did this is irresponsible and putting Caden at risk. We are so sorry you have to deal with this. Wow, so all the key names and key individuals who are helping within this case and within the case um, are sharing their comments here which is obviously interesting, everyone collecting in one place. So, their pockets run deep, or Brooke has relations with L.E., question. Steve, you're the only one telling the truth, now the police have to investigate the police and the firemen. And at least from that guy interrogating, he sounded pretty pissed by it, annoyed. Annoyed that the truth has come out, embarrassed that some of his own, or people that he knows of, could be responsible in a corrupt way. Different ways of looking at it. Rita, what's that? Good job. Mona Dyer, can you help get this resolved for Caden and Alicia? Asking Cindy, this is cyber bullying and if they were hacked, that's a federal crime. What else? Stand with you. Caden, this is a lawsuit. So who's this Claire? Another fake account like the rest? Uh, response to Shannon who mentioned it. Shannon said she received the Dropbox link to the leaked audio from Claire. But who is Claire? Melanie, I'm so sorry this is happening, Caden. Please be safe. Be careful. Trav, the piece of beep. That day, done that. Now this. So the, the channel, I forgot the name of the channel, but the one with the beard, the one that actually posted it on YouTube, the leaked audio, the actual video audio. Did he post it without reaching out to anyone and asking could I post it or not? Was it opportunistic behaviour? 
was that channeling connection with Brooke Bounds Carter or anyone else Lee connect? Did anyone get the leak first hand, first come, first serve of hierarchy? Get a real good attorney. Escalated quick. Did he say number 32? If they were real uniforms, which I'm sure they are, wouldn't that be public knowledge of their numbers matched with their names? You have an army behind you. He said they shared it with partners in true crime because they said they heard it. Alicia Lee told you, no ma'am, that is not true. People put comments on here without facts. Partners in true crime did listen to the recording, both Alicia and they have stated it. That's what Shannon says. Interesting. Steve, if you think Partners in True Crime shared it, if your comments suggest that Partners in True Crime Lee can get, if Partners in True Crime seen it, that's fine. Rob and Cindy will not share information. Not something such as this. This case isn't their first rodeo. Alicia and Noah's family trust Partners in True Crime. Partners in True Crime could be sued if you think they leaked it. Rob and Cindy are not stupid. They're here to find the truth and get justice. Your name is new to me. Your comments seem to want to stir up trouble. I've read comments. I'm getting a vibe from you. It isn't good. I guarantee you, if you want to stir up a hornet's nest, you will get stung. Ooh. What else do we have? You have every right to not trust no one. Sam. That's by Katie. So obviously, Caden has been somewhat damaged by this and probably put more in the firing line more than ever. Let's be real. When Caden Pressey did that Partners in True Crime interview and he put himself out there, he became a target from there on. You know, people, those within the case, those connected with those within the case, criticising Caden, um, interpreted as gaslighting, others interpreting it as threatening Caden to change his story. So, yeah, pretty eye-opening and impactful, reactionary backlash. And then the private interview which goes into a lot more detail and a lot more shocking points made and stated. You can imagine how the backlash would be from that, even worse. Let's move on. Dusty Butler. They did one interview with Caden. He was nervous, I'm sure. They've done multiple interviews with some of the other partygoers. Wonder how many of their stories have changed throughout the interviews or what they might have forgotten to say because they are only focused on the questions asked. We have watched their stories change on Facebook, yeah? Also, Caden's interview was months after, and obviously he didn't go in with a rehearsed timeline. Is this in reference to the Partners in True Crime one, or the formal one? Let's just see what's mentioned here, because this could really help. Alicia Lee says, Caden was interviewed twice, once in October, and then this interview was in June. Right, that reinforces what the viewer on my channel said yesterday, I believe. So credit to them in the background. So the one what we looked at, listened to, the leaked audio occurred in June. Partners in True Crime did their interview with Caden July. Not that far apart, but in terms of the story told and the timelines, they do differ. And there are a few inconsistencies, if I'm being honest with you. If those inconsistencies are on purpose for legal reasons, fair enough. But I just wanted to highlight it. Now, in terms of the one in October, that would be considered more significant, maybe? Hmm. Maybe not. Yeah, September, October. If we're talking about October as in 2023, that would be very interesting to hear. As for the one in June 2024, might be a bit more limited because of the time apart. The earlier it's done, the fresher the memory, maybe the more accurate it is. So if you could compare, if it was ever possible publicly, within reason, compare the earliest interview with one of the latest ones and see how it differs. Just for that true consistency. I'd contact Caden's attorney. Okay. Crystal, how was this interview that was conducted by your staff leaked out to someone in the public? Ah, so that's a direct response to Oklahoma Highway Patrol. Will they respond? Probably not. Shannon, once again popping up. It wasn't leaked by police. Someone Alicia trusted and shared it with turned it around and betrayed her trust and shared it. But how do we know for certain? Who is that one to betray? Sharoy, how do you know? Please provide proof. Here we go again. Alicia just said it was the thread. 
I saw the link yesterday. When you clicked, it stated it was shared from Alicia's Dropbox. The link no longer works as it had been deleted. Right, here is Alicia, the mother to um, Ken and Pressy. So which group did you see the link in? Sure, the something wasn't here or others except me one. This ain't some fake account. Not true, Shannon says. Just another person trying to stir up BS. Hmm. Literally, all the people... Oh, I got it, but this person or that person, not the original. Ken Pressy, there we go. I watched this at 4 a.m. Oh, I thought you were going to mention the Jack times I'm full load. Now, I think I heard of full load in the past. Aren't they the group that do the podcast on the case at some point? It's weird how these OHP detectives are leading his theory away from Jack Newton when they ask him what he believes happened. Hmm. I noticed that too. Shirai pissed me off. I noticed a fair bit of arrogance. Firstly, Caden's coming in, offering help to the investigation, trying to remember things from a while ago in order. For them to compare that to Jack's forgetting things is crap. First of all, Caden wasn't the first person to announce to the household that Noah was deceased. Caden wasn't with Noah's body first with unknown persons. Caden didn't announce death time. Caden didn't give three or four different times. Yeah, put that into perspective. I mean, the focus should be really on Jack for saying 4am is when Noah passed away. Rita, several times, but it's also showed Caden's true character. Not what one time was he disrespectful, arrogant or defensive back. That's true. You can tell that he has always been accustomed to telling the truth and had no problem answering the questions. You have to remember this interview was nine months after Noah's death. I can understand that he had to think twice about some things to remember details more clearly. They knew he was telling the truth. They just didn't want to accept it. Now, in terms of when I heard the partners in True Crime interview, I was questioning a few things, but then when the part, the 10 minute part came about in the second episode, it made it a bit better in the end, and it was all right, in my opinion. But then when comparing that, then comparing it now to this leaked one, I don't know, it differs again. And it's trying to adapt and process it. Especially when they asked him what he thought, not what he knew. And then acted like he was lying, trying to twist his words. Never do this again without a lawyer. Hmm. Did sound a bit unprofessional. Melissa. And the fact that Ellie mentioned others, those triggered his memory and he, when he agreed. And then tried to act like he lied. He said he'd been drinking. And when you drink, officer, you forget sometimes until someone triggers your memory. This back and forth, asking the same question three different ways is what I'm talking about. I mean, I saw it as a bit of a therapist at some point, what the interviewer was doing, trying to relate or try and understand Cade and twist some words to get Cade to agree with a certain point. You know, were you there Friday? Yes, no, maybe I was. And then the police guy says, well, actually, you could have been. There's a, there's a fair chance you probably would have been there. How would he know? You weren't there. Caden might be confused, and that police guy's trying to get him to think a certain way and accept that as the truth when it may not be. That's problematic. What else do we have? Oh, here we go. And trying to redirect attention away from the Newtons. I'd love to see the video too, and Kathy needs that video backed up so that they can delete. Yeah, about Kathy Bingham. Maybe we need to do a focus there sometime. That's just what Ellie does. I've dealt with them at different levels, many. Ellie are trained to ask the same questions. Okay. What else made me so mad? It's supposed to be an interview, in other words, it's a statement, not an interrogation. Yeah. Listen to my opinion, they were trying to pull or maybe out what they could get out from him. Actually said in the very beginning of his interview that he only wanted to talk about Caden, but then it went a bit further and it wasn't needed. Interrogation that prepares Caden and his lawyer for the witness stand. This interview came pressy did in June. It's now mid September. I just don't understand why we aren't seeing arrest. What's going on? There are so many comments where there are only the only people who had access to it was the attorney, L E, family, only loaded to Dropbox because it was two hours long. So such a limited amount of people had access to it. Does that mean that um an outsider, stranger hacked into it? Or are you possibly highlighting the LE in the middle of it all, somehow doing it on purpose or accident. Ken Presley definitely needs witness protection, needs to be resorted. 
Looks like Caden Pressey knew this was up. It didn't seem too upset to me. Still believe Caden Pressey more than anyone. I haven't got to listen yet. What does that mean there? What does that say? Tater Top Pressey. Criminal hate me. Thanks for doing this interview, Caden. The whole world needs to know the truth about what happened to Noah that morning. And this video helps clear some things up. Is that really Caden Pressey's profile? The profile picture looks like of Wolfenstein, the video game. One hour ago. I don't know how true that is. I mean, how do we know that's really Caden Pressey? Is it real? What's the response then? Alicia Lee didn't bother him because he put a thumbs up. Huh. Well, Caden Pressey put a thumbs up when he said, I can't trust people anymore. Alex says, how do you even know if that's his actual YouTube account? Nicole says, I'm sorry, I wasn't meaning it that way. I was meaning, like, if it is his YouTube account, we didn't say much. I'd be so mad I would go off. He's been treated very poorly. Right, so it's not truly confirmed. Right. So there's a chance that that pressy account could be a fake one. That's even worse. Now, Alicia Lee says, whilst well, these people post laughing face emojis, constantly send us jabs via Messenger and use fake accounts to make horrible comments about my son on YouTube and Reddit, my son put in danger. This is a deliberate criminal act. You have proven you do not want justice for Noah, Loud and Claire. Let's see what this is provided by Alicia. So, okay, we saw this earlier on. Brooke Bounds Carter, July 25th at 1.22 p.m. I want to be honest with you. Did you get Yal's phone's pings back to show he was at Noah at 5.21? Because I have proof that shows at least one of the boys wasn't there. Mum to mum, I'm coming to you. Who's the one on the receiving end of this conversation, though? Brooke Bounds Carter messaging. Whose point of view is this taken from? It does not mention a name. Can anyone clear that up? I know Alicia Lee has posted it, but is this from Alicia Lee's point of view or someone else's? And in terms of 521, isn't that to do with the timestamp of when Cade and Pressy got down to the highway to know his body? But Brooke Bounds Carter is suggesting that at that time, there was at least one of the boys that wasn't with Caden at the highway, even though Caden states he was, that the boy was actually still at the party house laying on his back with the girls taking a photo. And then a timestamp was provided to reinforce it, but the photo wasn't shown at the same time. And people are saying in the background through Snapchat that it can be manipulated. Oh, I remember all of that. And to be honest, at the time of when that was being put across and even Brooke Bounds Carter was mentioning it on my channel or around it or so, at the time of when I looked at it, which was posted or reposted on Facebook, yes, it showed the timestamp, but it did not show the photo. Oh, that's in the background. Well, I, then why can't we see it then? It's just awkward. Anyway, besides that, the next one that came about was 6.09 p.m. What? July or of this month, when exactly? Brooke forwarded a link. Oopsie daisy, wrong person. Does that mean that Brooke sent this to the wrong person and then it got out of hand and then the person that received this ended up leaking it? I don't know how to interpret this. Or was Brooke messing about joking saying, oopsie, sent it to the wrong person? Not. I wonder... Was it deleted afterwards as an accident or what? Sharoi says, the people make me livid. So sorry you guys are going through this. Okay, I'll support you. Stay safe. By Melissa. Any key comments? Not on the looks of it there. Paul, absolutely disgusting to think that someone would go that low to leak. So, Caden's stuff has been leaked. Has anyone else's been leaked? Jack Newton's polygraph, has that been leaked? No. Um, Carter Combs, Avery Combs, cooperation with the police, has that been leaked? Not from the looks of it. Is it one-sided? You could say that. Oh my God, this is illegal. That should have been posted period. Caden, in my opinion, is the only one of the party kids telling the truth. See, Whilst it might not be down to the police situation, when it comes to online social media, there's been a lot of text conversations that have been leaked. You know, Jack Newton's comments and responses to Justin Roy have been leaked. I mean, where, where do you draw the line at the end of the day? 
I guess when it comes to the full on legal stuff and the police, the really sensitive stuff, that could really harm a case. Yeah, that's only been um, Caden on the receiving end. What else do we have? Nick, everyone go to one hour, 21 minutes and five seconds into the interview. It's huge. As the video goes, backs up everything Caden Pressey has said and makes Jack Newton look worse. I can't remember the exact timestamp, what it was about, but I picked up on a few things from it. Always refer back if you want. This is the first and only video audio that I've listened to since I started following this case thing. Okay. And see, Caden, just keep in mind, they're trying to trip you up. And an old person could not remember every little detail. Yeah, fair point. The miracle of OHP track down where the leak came from. Is that even possible? They're not going to. Frida, one hour mark. Did anyone besides me hear that Avery Combs threatened to kill Noah Presgrove and the girl Logan? That in itself is huge because just wow. But to be honest, that wasn't the only thing mentioned. Now, I, f I don't know if it was mentioned by Jack Newton in the last Partners in True Crime interview or if it was mentioned by Caden or Justin Roy. It was of one of the three individuals. Avery didn't just threaten to kill Noah Presgrove because of sleeping on the floor next to Logan when Noah was or about to call Avery a fat beep. Avery said, you know, if you're going to say that, I will kill you. So two lots of, I will kill you. Doesn't sound too good. The thing is, that term, that line, can be used very loosely that it actually loses its meaning, especially when you say it so often and if you're around friends. It just so happens that within this case, it did lead to Noah dying. So you're probably more likely to link one thing with another. So the last thing that you said, oh, I will kill you. And then what happens to him? He ends up dying. So are you responsible? In any other situation which didn't lead to a death and it didn't lead to anyone getting injured, no one would really question it, would they? So, going to take that into mind. Whole case has been corrupt from the start. Okay. Brave. How this guy get his hands on the interview, upload it to YouTube and out without Ellie knowing? Right, holy shit. Absolutely mind blowing to me. This kid handled himself with grace, someone three times his age. Who leaked this? Vanessa says it was Alicia Cadence recorded because it's two hours long. His mum sent it to an attorney. Can that attorney be trusted? Noah's family and a close friend of hers. Noah's family? Who's that close friend of Alicia? Hmm. Well, we have an idea of who did it, but Brooke sent a message yesterday to Alicia with the link to Caden's interview right after the Colton screenshot were posted stating JJ was there the night Noah died. So Brooke sent that to her, and today we wake up to find out Brooke sent it to troll Trav Davison, and he posted it on YouTube, which violates Caden's rights. So... You're saying that you've got an idea of who's done it, but at the same time, Brooke has been sharing it about. Or are we talking about the same exact person, or is it more than one? Press your for foul seat. Arrested. It does print lies about Alicia. Come and, and, okay, we just got through that. Networks. Any more key people commenting? To me, this was despicable. Especially when certain families are questioned. Just sorry it was leaked. Did anyone notice towards the end? No one asked real casually if Caden saw Mikey leave the house before three in the morning. That's something I'd heard before. Never heard before. And at the very end, at around 1.45 mark, when he asked what Caden feels happened after he went to bed and Ken starts to try and answer. And then he cut cut him off trying to reword the question so it's no longer just what Ken thinks but what he knows mm. aggressive tone adjustment yeah about the recorded footage okay so we've got Sharon there but a different Sharon why would Ken Press's mum share this with anyone that's what Alexis Dorif says why would Caden Press's mum share it with anyone Sharing it with Noah's family, I guess maybe for a bit of closure. I mean, if you're allowed to share it and it doesn't cause any problems and it's in confidence, it shouldn't be a problem. 
And if you share it with people you truly trust, it just shouldn't be an issue. Now, if it was uploaded to Dropbox and it wasn't shared to anyone, but it was still hacked into, it's still going to be a problem. It's still not going to be safe, is it? What's this? How do you know this? Could this have been Caden Pressy recording? Oh, this is so crazy. I don't know anyone personally, so I'm totally open-minded. Wow, a lot going on. So we're not going to read it all, but you can always pause it if you want, because there are some other possible screenshots we need to take a look at. But even the phone cart handle all these comments because it's pending. Right, so I think that might be it, because I'm not seeing any more. How many comments were there? 262. I mean, it's all right. Where are we at there? Let's just adjust it to the newest post if possible because I just want to see what else is present. So the first cross, Justin honouring, acknowledging Noah, of course, we've seen that. Shout out to Laura for sharing this video which was basically an analysis summary of what has been said, the key bullet points. Okay, so yes, I have done a video but I have not shown the audio itself, never included it. Okay. Where's the key stuff though? Just finished listening to the two hour interview between Caden and investigators and it left me with so many questions. Has anyone heard from Brylin Sweat, Isaac Rojas, Mikey Lair about what they believed happened that night? Not too, of a, I'm not sure if I'm fully correct, but did Kathy Bingham ask one of them and it was somewhat positive and there was consistency matching with what Caden has said? Could be wrong. What else? Have they ever said if they agree or disagree with Caden's timeline? Reportedly down there and saw Noah's body roadside, 5.25am. But you got Brooke Bounds Carter claiming that out of one of the guys that was with Caden, he wasn't actually there but was at the party house. What would be the point of that then? Personally, I believe Caden's timeline is all telling that they all stopped talking to Caden after he shared his versions of events, contradicted theirs. Mm. So when Caden decided to stand out from the crowd and be honest, the others didn't like that. Two, another point that's interesting, when Caden and the boys arrived at the scene at 5.25am, there were two vehicles there, one was a semi, the other one was a service truck where Caden saw a man alongside Jack. Two versions, Tyler, Tyler Hardy. Yeah, it's a messy situation, isn't it? When did the first four law enforcement five items supposedly remove no shorts? They arrived at 6.15am, which is what going to stories currently, then Tyler Hardy would have seen this, which would mean he's lying, or did the four men show up earlier, remove the shorts, and semi driver just happened to record it. Well, Caden said he got there at 5.20, then by 5.30 when leaving, that's when, so it must have happened, because at least when Caden got there at 5.20, the black shorts were on, but then by 5.43, when the next wave of truck drivers came on down, the shorts weren't on Noah. They were supposedly in the middle of the road and they weren't black. So that's worth taking into mind, isn't it? There's a bit of a time frame for some things to possibly happen. Shout out to Laura again for sharing the video. Obviously, very good. Shout out to Vanessa for sharing the video. It's very good to see that. Spent the last two hours watching this. Never heard investigators push so hard to try and make Ken Pressey retract his story. Oh yeah, the... Kathy Bingham situation. Wow, well, here we go. So this is where it gets interesting. Joyce, two days ago. So Brooke Bounds Carter is not out for getting justice for Noah like she states they all are. She associates herself with other individuals to get the attention away from everyone. She has shamed Noah's family, stating that they are in it for the money. They all think she's going to go away because they have deep pockets. It's really not. Right, so let's just see... What's going on here? Apologies why it's on the side of the image. I, I don't know how to get in the middle of the screen. I think it's just Facebook being a bit dodgy. So we've got like um, a slideshow of it. Brooke Bounds Carter. Right. What does this mean? End-to-end -end encrypted. Messages and calls secured with end-to-end -end encryption. Do you normally get that on Facebook? Think about who's running the, that truth seeker group. Brooke says, oh... I agree. I also very much agree with the podcast people doing all this for money and some people in the family being involved with pushing BS for money. What is Brooke saying that certain 
no Presgrave family members are pushing BS to make money out of their own family related death. Ooh. Right, I don't think the family is doing this for money, but I'm just stating in general of what was posted started. I never want to make money. I'd want it to be told, just think about those running the Truth Seeker page. What is the Truth Seeker page? I've not heard that before. I'm just saying, don't follow through with it. Post and comments have been deleted. I'm all for wanting the truth and justice to come out. No one should have to deal with great pain. Brooke says, don't get me wrong. I don't think all of the family is in for the money. I think there are a few certain ones that are. I know the guy that posted that he is out there for sure. However, I do agree that that podcast and a few family members are about it. But it's very vague, the language, isn't it? That's just duplicated. I'm honestly not going to say whether they aren't because I don't know. Who is the guy that's running it? Running what? It's very vague, I'll be honest with you, that conversation of stuff. Is BBC writing in grey boxes or blue? Grey. Before you ask for proof, this is what we all deal with. Threats and them lashing out when the guilty are exposed. Oh no, Tiffany, here we are. Okay, one, y'all message to her. Two, there's literally no threat made in these screenshots. Three, there's nor is there any lashing out. I mean, from what I read there, it did seem very vague. It just seemed like that Brooke Bounds Carter didn't have a positive outlook on Noah Presgrove's family and that money is being made out of this and people are exploiting it. That's how it came across. Tiffany says, this, ladies and gentlemen, is what you baiting, gaslighting and antagonising, regardless of your opinion of Brooke Bounds Carter or anything that may have said or done, to post a screenshot of a conversation, y'all, I'm saying y'all, because I don't know which one of you initiated the conversation, messaged her and she responded, she didn't make any threat, she didn't lash out at anyone, she responded and stated her opinion, you don't have to like it, I mean, in that one occasion, that seems to be the case, I didn't see a threat there, but I have seen a threat in the past towards the family, saying, you keep pushing and pushing the mama bear, uh, Stevie Howard, lashback, and there are things what we know which you know the family don't want to know about either themselves or Noah being released public. That sound doesn't sound too good. Brooke said it was resolved, apologised in the past, but why would you come up with such a specific threat? Is that there's more thought behind it or truth? Okay. Vanessa says to Tiffany, Listen, who the hell do you think you are? You were slamming Noah's family and Noah post this. Mm. You know, obvious what side you're on. Tiffany says, I'm Tiffany Shepherd. Who the hell are you, Vanessa? Oh, really? Please enlighten me since you seem to know me so well. And Vanessa says, nobody messaged that nasty beep. Nothing. If you believe Brooke, so be it. You're on their side, remember, you trashed Noah's family. I guarantee Justin Roy won't agree with you accusing us of messaging Brooke. If so, show proof of the sick allegation. Okay. Well, people have deep pockets. Okay, two words, people. Alex Murdo. Don't know what that is. Another case. They cannot run from justice. Okay. I think of Noah's family. I mean, just quickly, just very quickly, anyone watching right now, let me know, do you see any threats within this specific exchange of conversation? Podcast people do it all for money, and some people in the family also involved with pushing certain stuff. That's like an opinion. It's not backed up with facts. I don't see a threat just yet. Oh, I agree, but I also very much agree with the podcast people doing this all for money and some people in the family being involved with pushing BS. Once again, opinion. Don't get me wrong, I don't think all of the family is in for the money. I think there are a few certain ones that are. I know the guy that posted it, he is out there for sure. However, I do agree that podcasts and few family members are about it. Once again, an opinion, but I don't know what it means by he is out there for sure. Who is he? Vague, yet again doesn't help. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I saw that. Why is it duplicated? I just don't see any threats within that by Brooke Bounds Carter. I've seen threats by Brooke Bounds Carter in the past, but I just don't see it within these text conversations. And that's me being honest. But 
maybe they're elsewhere too. Brooke is making up lies that Shannon, Alicia's friend, leaked the audio. It's a lie. It was not Shannon nor any Melissa. It was someone else, and they're lying to make up for them leaking it to Trav. You saw the screenshot of Brooke. All right, so this is like a repost. It's very blurry, okay? Oh, my God. So for anyone that's got dodgy eyesight or for anyone that has good eyesight but can't read it, I don't blame you. It's a disaster in quality. But I will read it out to you because I can see it. We saw that top post earlier about the my goodness, my goodness, and how it can bite you in the ass afterwards, kind of implying that, you know, you've done stuff in the past, oh, it's coming to get you now, such as this leaked audio, which is a bit telling and dodgy. Brooke Brown's Carter does say, though, for the record, Miss Shannon and Miss Melissa sent this recording out for the world to hear. I know they are posting in army and discussion groups like I am magically got these so crazy hidden way. They should be watching their inner circle on things with laughing, crying emojis. But let's just say, even though it might not be true, how would Brooke Bounce Carter know that of all the different named individuals within the case community, it was supposedly Shannon and Melissa? Hmm? Anyway, Donna, highly doubt those kids are innocent as they're trying to repair. And uh, Brooke says, well, well, the kids will be kids. They were drinking and I'm sure they were cussing and making inappropriate comments and jokes that night. So you're right. Not quite that innocent. However, after a very long two-hour interview, I listened to with a certain person and OHP, it's clear to me, which we already knew, they solidified it. Very vague once again, you watched it with a certain person. Who's that certain person that you watched it with? Right, how do I get out of this before it kicks me off? Right, where's, this, where's the comments? Lies, lies, lies. My phone wouldn't even send a large file. All comments. Sorry about that. Maybe she's talking about a different Shannon. There'll be a lot of different Shannons, won't there? Let's see. Vanessa. But no, Shannon has seen the video. Nobody had access except Ellie, lawyers and nurse family, maybe PI. Oh, no, Shannon has seen the video. What? But no, Shannon has seen the video. Is it because there's no comma? Do you mean, no, Shannon hasn't seen the video? Or you mean, no, comma, Shannon has seen the video. I am guess that's what it means. She went back and added my last name. What? Who is telling you this about me? Uh-oh. Returning all negativity, lies and evil back to the sender. Vanessa, I'm saying no Shannons, as in not you or Sullivan, have seen the private video. Brooke is telling people Shannon sent it to her. Shannon says, I know for a fact that I didn't send anything. She even went back and added my last name. Right. Dragging me into their lies. They've accused me of numerous things and even tagged me when it wasn't me or tagged another Shannon when it wasn't me. Constant deflection. Is the reason why Shannon Scott being targeted just simply because she's friends with Alicia Lee? Is, is, is that the reason? Hmm. At first I was so ticked off, but I know that I didn't send them anything. For one, I couldn't. I know when and where I watched it. I cannot wait. Wait. Hold on. I know that I didn't send them. So you didn't send the leak, but you say I know when and where I watched the video. Ah. Unhinged, you can tell. We've seen that before. I'd love to school them on Discovery, but it's all I can do to hold off. Clearly, it's all a game to them. The laughing as well. So, your excuse for her posting it on YouTube is this screenshot. Not making excuses, I'm just showing what I saw over there. They're all disgusting over on that page. Okay, she doesn't. It's another lie. Clearly, this girl is one of them, or the minion spreading blatant lies. Oh, Shannon Sullivan says to Dusty, I hope you're not insinuating it was me. No, ma'am, we just have multiple Shannons in the group. 
I did not want to assume it was anyone in particular. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Sounds like a threat too. Does it? Just a mess. Let's go for it bit by bit. Anyone in the chat let me know your thoughts. Oh, Donna Bond has shown up. Donna says, why doesn't everyone block that dumb beep? Brooke, let the crotch goblin talk to herself. I've never heard that mentioned before. Hmm. There she is. Yeah, that beep is angry after Colton stated JJ was there the night morning when Noah died. Wait, Brooke Bounds Carter. So Brooke Bounds Carter's angry at Colton. Why would Brooke Bounds Carter be... What, looking out for JJ Bump ass? Is it because they're related or something? Doesn't sound like it. Well, this video shared in the group. Smoke screen from them again. Justin Roy, I've not seen Justin Roy that much. It's pretty much it there. Just about catching up on all the bits and bobs along the way. Behind the scenes. So we're threats being made behind the scenes. So, just going back over this once again. Yeah, of all the other little screenshots, what we saw where people were saying there were threats and threats, and I said, ah, well, I can't really see that. Let me go back over this one more time. What a day of discovery. Some people really should have stepped back when they had the opportunity. That is almost like inviting a possible threat. Dragging innocent kids down will always come back to bite you in the ass. So if this is talking about the recent theme of what's come about with the Caden Pressy situation and it's saying, you know, none of this would have happened if people stepped back. You had the chance to do so and yet you neglected it. And while she continued to drag in other kids' names, what, JJ Bump ass, Travis Monson or Colton, anyone like that? Whilst that's gone on, in the end, it does come back to bite you as a form of karma. This, mentioned by Brooke Bounds Carter, could be considered, I don't know, considering it as a threat when it's already happened. Do you get what I'm saying? Unless this was posted before the leak occurred. Normally, if you send a threatening message because it's worded as in something bad is going to happen to that person. If someone said, I'm going to beep, 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 kill you. It's not happened yet. So it can be interpreted as a threat. If it's already happened, it's no longer a threat because it's already taken place. You get what I'm saying? When looking back retrospectively, it was a threat and it was followed through with. And in other cases where it's not followed through with, but it's come to an end and things move on, it's no longer a threat in a way. It's like there's an expiry date. So in terms of this, if, it, if this was posted at the time or just after the leak, it's kind of like looking back and saying indirectly, you see all this mess, all this mess that's happened because of me or someone that I know could have all been avoided if you did the right thing, if you listened. That's how it comes across. None of this had to happen. This is all on you. It sounds like a quote from a movie. So yeah, I wouldn't say this is a threat, but it's like a retrospective uh, point highlighting this is what happens when you mess with us. You get what I'm saying? Seems like the damage has already been done. But how much damage has it done to the case? Shannon, in response to BBC Big Discovery, I'm failing to see the big importance and breaking news. The only thing I get from it is these fools are putting another young adult at risk of harm, but we all know some do not care about the life of others. Caden Pressey has said over and over he fell asleep. I feel like the minor that was holding the gun, Isaac Rojas, heavily intoxicated, provided alcohol as well as a place to party by the owners, the host, legal age, also asleep when possibly was arrived. The only problem is, Caden Pressey originally said, went to sleep at 2 in the morning, woke up at 2.42, went back to sleep close to 3 in the morning. 
And then in this leaked interview, he said he actually went to sleep at, what, 3.20, 3.21? And obviously that's a lot closer to around the time of when Noah supposedly walked off at 3.30. So from 3.20 to 3.30, what actually happened to Noah in that time frame? And then with the reference, what was it, Jasmine telling Caden that earlier on around two in the morning or a bit before, that's when Noah wandered off. Well, then when did the side-by-side -side take place then? I'd have to look back at it. it. As said, because of the changes to these time stamps, I'm having to make adjustments along the way. So it has a chain reaction, a negative effect with all the other stuff along. So... It's going to take some time to adjust and pick up on the bits. Other people may find it easier. I'll get there. Constant deflecting from the party goes, but still goes not to change the fact that death occurred at a house that allowed alcohol. So, so you think that Noah died on site at the property? Hmm. Does that? I think that might be pretty much it. Now. If I can find any more screenshots of interest, I'll do that right now. And if not, I'll just give you my additional thoughts. So I did try look elsewhere and not much seemed to show up. The, the, the odd screenshot where Brooke was commenting, messaging with other people, maybe the odd insult or uh, sassy line with some emojis, but nothing that bad. I, I mean, this is the thing. If I start saying certain stuff, people will probably jump on the bandwagon and say, you're defending Brooke Bounds Carter. But the best way I can word it is, over the last week or two, when threats have been claimed to have been made, and when I've tried looking for them, it's not stood out clear enough. That it might not be a threat, but just an insult, a petty line, sassy behaviour. When it came to, like, Jack Newton with his comment, no. Oh, you know, respond back before I get upset. It's not like a threat, but it's highlighting that something isn't going to happen. You could consider it as a negative thing is going to happen, a bad thing, which involves him, which could be a threat. But, you know, I guess the threats, what I think of is I'm going to beat the beep out of you, as we saw with Carter Combs. Not that I've been on the receiving end of it, but I've seen a lot more direct, a lot more full-on threats. So probably the tolerance level, the expectations are probably a bit higher. So when you see the lesser threats, I don't see that. That's a possibility. But I only really saw one threat today. Some of it was opinions by Brooke Bounds Carter. The one uh, retrospective threat, like a warning, I told you so, by Brooke Bounds Carter, even said it will bite you in the back when you start pulling other innocent names within it all. But all in all, I think it's a bit of a mess, right? The key thing is, and the question, what happens next? How bad does this impact Caden? How much danger does it put him in? How much damage does it cause to the case? Does this leak make Caden's interview invalid now, I wonder. Was it done as a form of sabotage and it's worked? They're the questions. What happens beyond that point? Keep moving forwards, is that possible? Is it as you make two, uh, you make one step forward, dark forces in the background push you two steps back, or at least a progress? I wonder. I mean, there's still things for me to cover in between, but definitely big, Small scale, well not small scale, a big scale short term burst of breaking news, leaks, comments, messages and not to forget the Colton Newton situation, the JJ Bumper situation and more. We'll, we'll see what happens and the conversations from tonight's video. A bit of a shorter one but long enough for conversation. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time but for now goodbye and good night.